pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads. The weather wasn't cooperating, so it's raining all day, and it's supposed to rain all day next Friday, so I may not be able to do another El Fresco Friday Reads from my current location. But if I can sneak another kind of outdoor video in before I leave on June 23rd, I will do my best. But anyway, so here I am, and I'm going to show you a video. I'm humiliated that you're going to see how ridiculously messy my floor the floor of my apartment is but uh, for the last six months or longer since my library has just ballooned exponentially the only place to put a large two pile stack of books of teaching English as a second language teaching books has either been on one half of my sofa my electric recliner sofa or when Kenji comes to sleep and we need the whole sofa, then those books get moved onto my computer chair th that I'm sitting on now. So I've here's a video of the stack on my the chair that I'm currently sitting on, and I'll show you that I have to move so... <laughs> I'm literally going to start packing right after I film this video. I can't put it off any longer. I'm moving in eight days. So those that pile of books is the first thing that's going to get boxed. I don't know where I'm going to put the boxes, but I'll, I'll figure, have to figure that out before I sleep. I guess I can put the box in. <laughs> I'm finally starting. You have all been wonderfully enabling in uh, giving me permission to just keep reading and wasting time, but now it's crunch time. And I don't have much to say for Friday Reads, so I'm going to talk about some stuff that I don't usually talk about on a Friday Reads, which is just a list of books that I'm curious about trying out in the future. But I haven't started any new books. I haven't finished any new books. I haven't bailed on any books since I checked in with you all last Friday. But I have had a great reading week. But I'm not going to talk about it, other than that the only thing TBR-ish is tomorrow. I'm going to start... The Comforters by Muriel Spark, and this is a massive buddy read that originally started out with Adam of Memento Mori and Leah of Hide and Seek, but has now ballooned into half of Booktube. And I'm not going to invite any more because I think if I invite any more onto Voxer, none of us are going to have time to listen to each other's audio messages. So I think we got about ten, maybe. Really looking forward to that. I, it's such a short little book. We're going to do it over two weeks basically because I'm just going to be really busy for the next two weeks, but I should be able to keep up with it and looking forward to rereading Muriel Sparks' debut. Otherwise, I have been not only distracting myself with drinking a lot of wine and reading a lot and working, but anything but packing, I've also been keeping my eyes peeled for new and interesting books. And I don't mean only new releases but new to me and I have a list of five that have captured my imagination and this is kind of maybe the beginning of a conversation I'm not going to digress too much because I don't have time today about my evolution devolution my journey oh that sounds really exalted my journey as a reader moving away from I don't think I'm moving away from new releases I'm not I share Steve Donahue's passion for discovering new writers. You know, most of the new releases are crap, and that's just the way most books are crap, but finding the, the gold. But I think I'm moving away from fixation with prize lists, so stay tuned. I'll have more to say about that. So this is a mix of new releases and really old books that uh, I've discovered. I guess there's only one that's really old, and I'm going to start with that. I'm reading the biography of Barbara Pym, enjoying it, even though it's a biography. Biographies kind of suck for me, but learning quite a bit about her, and that's it. And one of the things is that in 1936, uh, there was a novel published by a poet and novelist in the UK called Stevie Smith, a woman. The novel was novel. The novel was novel on yellow paper. And one of her best friends, who himself, Jock Liddell, was a novelist, among many other hats that he wore. But nobody remembers him the way they remember Barbara Pym. But he started actually publishing his novels earlier than Pym. 
but he gave her this novel, novel on yellow paper. And I'd never heard of it, Googled it, sounds fascinating. It's about, uh, it's kind of the journal or diary of a secretary in, in the mid 1930s and a journey for her out of her kind of casual anti-Semitism and uh, I think she visits Germany and she sees what's happening there and it, it's a very humorous but story with a very serious side. The writing style is quite unique so I'm really curious and I'm so curious to read anybody that Barbara Pym was reading. So that's one that's gone on I think and I'm doing the Barbara Pym biography as a buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages and I think we're both interested in buddy reading that and alongside quite a few others that we've been finding out about by reading the biography. Next is a book. This is the first book that I found out about from Instagram and I have no idea whose post it was. I should go back and check and maybe give her credit, him or her credit. But this is a gay novel set within the Caribbean community of London or at least Britain. I didn't actually investigate how so closely to know whether it's London. But it's called Mr. Loverman a 2013 novel by Bernadine Evaristo. And it's about an Antiguan-born British man and his wife. They've been married for 60 plus years and he has been carrying on a love affair with another man all of that time or most of that time. So he must be in his 80s. And sounds fascinating. I previewed the first page on script and it really it was funny and really the writing was really interesting it really grabbed me so I want to get to that I have it as an ebook on Scribd and the cover is really enticing too so anybody out there read it certainly when it was not one that I was aware of I since I since I found out about it I see that Simon Savage mentioned it in a wrap-up I haven't had time I'm so busy but I haven't had time to watch what his uh, his uh, comments but and uh, yeah, I don't read a lot of gay fiction. I read Some Hell this year, really liked it, had some major qualms with it, won't have time to do a review anytime soon, so probably that means I won't do a review. But uh, was there another queer title I read this year? Well, I guess the, uh, the John Boyne novel, but the less said about that, the better. But here's two more queer titles, so I'm not reading any in... June, Pride Month, but uh, here's two more that I found out about this week. This is a Canadian novel, debut, came out maybe in March this year, and I can't remember, I think maybe on Twitter, I found out about it just yesterday. A Boy at the Edge of the World by David Kingston Yeah, Y-E-H. Now I'm not sure I like the descriptor of what kind of book this is in the Goodreads profile. It's a confabulated fictional memoir. That doesn't do anything for me. It's autobiographical novel or semi-autobiographical novel, but maybe that's okay, but a confabulated fictional member. So I don't really have high hopes for this. It's also that I was able to get a net, uh, a automatic approval for on NetGalley to, to read the galley. So they're not, so that they seem kind of desperate. I haven't flipped through it enough to know whether, but it's about a gay hockey player from small town Ontario. I don't have a good feeling. I hope I'm pleasantly surprised. Yay, Canadian gay fiction. There ain't a lot of it out there. But any of you who are interested, you can get an automatically approved NetGalley copy. The next one is a gay novel from Morocco. And this came, somebody on, that I follow on Twitter. I don't know that he's on booktube. I don't even remember who it was. Sorry. I don't didn't have time to do as much background research as I usually do. Did a long thread about this writer. Abdella Tia, openly gay Moroccan novelist and filmmaker now living in Paris. He was the first openly gay Arab writer ever. He came out in 2006, and he is still the only openly gay writer from Morocco. And he was born in 1973. He's, several of his books, novels, have been translated. The one that maybe I would start with is called Salvation Army, published in 2006, translated by Frank Stock in 2009, a coming-of-age story about a gay guy living in 
Morocco. And uh, the Twitter thread gave a whole series of really uh, interesting observations or contentions that Taya has made about gay culture, interper gay interpersonal sexual culture that I didn't know if I agreed with him or not, but that's what made me go and check out more about him, and I will read the novel. So that one has captured my imagination. Two more, and I'm not going to spend much time on this next one because everybody on BookTube's talking about it, and that's great, but it's it's getting to the point, and this is kind of my thing about prize lists, and this is not on a prize list so far as I'm aware, but I can quickly get overwhelmed by hearing a lot about a book, and if I don't read it right away, then I have to read it years later. And already I'm hearing quite a bit about the short story cycle, There There by Tommy Orange, a novel or a short story cycle about urban indigenous Americans that are all traveling to some big indigenous American gathering and uh, has been getting very positive reviews. So I either have, I either have to read it soon or stop listening to, to uh, all this, all the chatter out there, or uh, just leave it for a few years. But it's certainly on my radar. And the last one, also a, a new release, I think this month, maybe last month, first heard about it on Kendra's channel, and maybe I wasn't paying deep attention because I didn't get really sold on it until I heard the Book Riot podcast talk about it this week. Visible Empire by Hannah Pittard. I read Hannah Pittard's kind of suspenseful novel, Listen to Me, which came out a couple years ago. I did it on audio. It was amazing. I don't like those kind of novels, and it was a five-star read. This is a more serious literary novel, and it's based on the true story. And the true story, I think, is actually better than the novel. Goodreads ratings so far are quite low, but I still want to try it. Listen to this. This is the true story I had never heard of. More than a hundred residents, high society, community, and political leaders, industry leaders of Atlanta went to Europe in 1962 for some cultural exchange tour. And when they got on the plane in Paris or wherever it was to fly home, the plane crashed and they all died. So Atlanta in 1962 lost more than a hundred of its leaders and created hundreds and hundreds of orphans and rich heirs and it just sent a shockwave through the, through the city and Hannah Bittard has written a novel based on that which also talks about the racial the civil rights movement uh, in the era and the Ku Klux Klan and uh, whatnot so it sounds fascinating early reviews very mixed but I want to try it so those are books that I am curious about are any of these interesting to you? What are you up to reading-wise or otherwise? I've had several offers of people offering to come over and help me pack, but so far uh, the geography has played a problem. There's still time for you to get here. <laughs> I think I'm going to film one more page 112 tag. You won't see it for weeks because I've got still two in the editing pipeline, but then that will be probably the last video I film in this room because it's going to start to be disassembled. Anyway, blah blah blah. That's all. Thanks for watching.